Hi everyone. <coughs> I thought we'd give this a whirl. I don't know if you can actually see that. Let me zoom in. But uh, there is a very nice score mark going all the way around that disc. And I think that's the reason the front brake is not working very well at all. And the rear one is just the same. So. I figured I can say it shouldn't be too difficult now we take this one off and we put another one on so and this type we've got six bolts to undo there we go it's better you can see what I'm doing I don't even know if the other disc is going to be any good. But it looks better than this one. So hopefully it is. This could be a bit of a bugger because they're lock threaded on. I've got thread lock. See that blue stuff on there? Thread lock. <clears throat> Naturally, because you don't want your disc to come flying off for your brakes, do you? <laughs> That would not be good. Right. Yeah, now we've just got two more to go. Believe it or not, there is actually a torque spec for these, but I haven't got it. And I don't have a torque wrench for it anyway, so. But I literally just crank them up as hard as I can by hand. And I've never had an issue. And they're thread locked, like I said, so. Chuck that one down there. Chuck that one there. Put this aside for the moment. Because this has been stored around, I'm going to give it a clean. Looks like water, but it's actually um, alcohol. Use clean steel wool. Just go around the outside, give it a clean. You could use other cleaners. I mean, WD-40 is a good degreaser, but it'll leave a residue on here, then your brakes won't work. So I'd actually advise against using something like WD-40. The reason I'm using a clean piece of steel wool is so I don't cross-contaminate or get any other contaminants on the disc. the surface up. It's actually looking like a pretty good disc. It looked better than that other one anyway. Now there is a right way and a wrong way to put these on. Let's see, right there is a little arrow. That's the direction of rotation. So I'm pretty certain it's going to go this way up. I'm trying not to put my grubby fingers on the actual brake surface. Yep, we all line up. So we put our bolts back in. I'm just making sure, or I was making sure that the bolt pattern's the same because uh, they can differ on rotors and hubs. But most of them, the common ones like this, are just a six stud. But I have come across five stud, or five bolt, whatever you want to call it. And if you noticed, I went in opposite like that, and I'll do them up like that, so you get a nice, even, clean.
clamps it down nice and evenly. What I'll do, I'll go down as tight as I can with the hexagon key like this on all of them and then go around and make sure they're all tightened up nicely. And I've got a funny feeling I'm going to have to adjust that yet. <laughs> One second. Back that one off. Back that one off because it's not quite lined up. I've got to rotate it a bit. Let's get another one in. And that should try and get this one started. Prevent it all from rotating. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put all these in or get them started. He says. If I was really vain, I'd put new bolts in just to make it look nice, but I'm not that vain. <laughs> put nice bolts in, it's going to get soaked and wet and whatnot, so... It'll just rust again. There we go. Yeah, the arrow points in the wheel in the direction that the wheel will rotate when the bike's going forward, so. And if we, well, the brake calipers are always on the left, so you picture that, the bike, well, that's your front, you'd be going that way, so that arrow is going in the right direction. Otherwise it won't work. tedious this job isn't it you know what do I talk about the weather shit there we go <laughs> we've had some very very light snowfall today I'll just walk around and just give these a tighten up opposites again see I don't think something like this really needs Talk spec, you just need to tighten the damn things up as tight as you can. You see that one I've loosened off. There we go. Right. Let's move to the bedroom. We're in the bedroom. This is why I like disc brakes. You haven't got to disconnect anything to get your wheel out. It is just a case of undoing your bolts, wheel bolts, and pulling the wheel out and dropping it back in. Yeah. Got some adjustments to do on the brake caliper because that is rubbing. Which I might take care of while that is upside down. Rubbing is not good. For two reasons. It prematurely wears down your pads. And, uh... It can um, cause friction and make it harder to pedal. Uh, really could do a being on the other side of the bike for this. Let's just see which side is it that's rubbing. Oh, both sides are. Well, I think it's primarily this side. Where's the adjuster? Just uh, this side. Just a smidge. Just a little rub. Yeah. It's actually on this side, and I can't adjust it out anymore. But what I will do. Flick it up the other way. Ooh. 
Oh, that's a lot better. So some room for some brake adjustment there, but that's actually a darn sight better. So all I need to do is buy a new disc. I thought it was the disc. Keep in mind that's not a brand new one, that's one I've had kicking around for a while as well. But uh, changing rotors on this is uh, as easy as that. That's why I did this video, it's not hard. Just undo, well, the only hard part can be undoing the the bolts that hold the um, disc on. Because some of them don't want to come off and I've had to drill them off in the past and then drill out the hole so I could put another screw in. You know, drill out the remaining thread. That's when it can get a headache, but thankfully on this one I didn't have that problem on either disc. Because I've had the rear one off to clean it up, but it's uh, got those score marks on it, which is a problem. <laughs> the discs were worn. Uh, yeah, I've still got a bit of room for adjustment on the brake, but I'm not going to bother with that. Because I'm changing the gear shifters on this and everything, so... There's no point in me getting the brakes and everything set up because I'm going to have to disconnect it all to change all the gears and whatnot over. So uh, the gear shifters I want, I have. That's not a problem. This one's knack woo knackered. I can't do anything with that. That's what. Well, that's the main reason I'm changing them. Otherwise, I'd have just left it as it was for the time being. But uh, it ain't going to work. So, all I've got to do is spend a little less than £5 on the rear rotor, because it's a different size. As I said in my last vlog, it's 140mm, not the standard 160mm. Why they did that, I don't know. Actually, I think I can see why. The rear swing arm on this is, a sl is um, smaller than a usual, or a lot of other um, dual suspension bikes. See, that's a bit closer together. That might be why they've used the smaller um, disc. Hmm. Anyway, just a quick little video. Thanks a lot for watching. Talk to you again soon. Bye.